Hi, I'm Lucy Lacanienta. I'm a research assistant for the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Kim Matheson. Thank you, Kim. You bet. Um, Kim is a Laura F. Willis Research Fellow from the Book of Mormon Studies at BYU's Neil A. Maxwell Institute. She holds a PhD in theology from Loyola University, Chicago, and an MTS in philosophy of religion from Harvard Divinity School. Kim is the author of Helaman, A Brief Theological Introduction, published by the Maxwell Institute in 2020. Thanks for being here. You bet. So our scripture block for this week covers Helaman 1 through 6, and the piece that we'll be looking at here today is up here. It is Nephi and Lehi in Prison by the Polish sculptor Roman Schledge. The sculptor is made from painted wood, and it was carved back in 2006. So this story comes after Nephi has given up the judgment seat and he and Nephi, or he and Lehi, his brother, have devoted all of their time to preaching because people are just so wicked, right? <laughs> um, and in the course of that preaching, they are cast into prison. So how do you see this artwork interpreting the scriptures that it was based upon? Yeah, you bet. Um, well, so first of all, it does make several interpretive moves, which is interesting in and of itself. This is not a piece that's meant to be simply illustrative. There are a lot of like subtle differences that the sculptor has made between what's represented here and then the text itself. So if one of those um, is that, for so for starters... Um, he's eliminated all of the racial difference of what we would expect in that prison. So he, the Helaman 5, the prison is in Lamanite territory, and most of the people in the prison are Lamanites, who the Book of Mormon says has dark, have darker skin. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that all of that racial difference is erased here. All of the characters down below in the prison have the same skin color. So that's an interesting interpretive move. Another one is that the characters in the prison are looking up toward heaven, they can, apparently, on my interpretation, they can see the angels up there. In Helaman 5, that's not immediately the case and because of, there's this cloud of darkness that's yeah. covering everything. Yeah. So this is the prison as if the cloud of darkness were not in it, mm -hmm. which is just a really interesting choice so that the, the people down below are looking up to heaven alongside Nephi and Lehi. In fact, more intensely than Nephi and Lehi. In Helaman 5... It's Nephi and Lehi who look up to heaven, mm -hmm. and everybody else just looks at them and says, gosh, what are they looking at? Until somebody explains. But here, it's actually the people down below who are looking up most pointedly. Nephi and Lehi, they're kind of, they're staring off at a more kind of oblique angle, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. So, so I'm intrigued just by this series of choices that the artist has made that are a little bit separate from the text. It's not simply illustrative. Absolutely. That's really interesting. Um, so I'm familiar with some of the work that you've done on these chapters, specifically in your Brief Theological Introductions book that you wrote uh, with the Maxwell Institute. And in that book, you talk about the prison that Nephi and Lehi are in as less of a place of incarceration and more of a temple. Can you elaborate on that and tell us what you mean? Yeah, and it actually relates to this, um, this piece quite nicely. I meant just a very basic point, I think, which is that temples are places where heaven meets earth. Mm -hmm. Um, they are they are places where the veil is a little thinner, we might say, as Latter-day Saints, where heaven can break through a bit more easily. You're a little bit further away from the world. Mm -hmm. And um, that's obviously very much what's going on in Helaman 5. It turns out um, that once the cloud of darkness is removed, there are angels everywhere. The place is just saturated with them. When Nephi and Lehi look up into heaven, they're having conversations with people. Heaven is Heaven is very, very present in this prison. Um, more than just a nice spiritual experience. It's not just one angel they're talking to. They are looking up into heaven and then giving the experience for all of these other people in the prison to also experience how close angels actually are. Where I see that in this artwork is in the really strong horizontal lines. So especially right below the angels, there's there's almost like this this ledge that they're all sitting on. And I like um, how nicely that parallels the strong horizontal line of the ground on which the other figures are standing. Um, that the, the parallel between those two and then also the way that the top one kind of dips down, divots its way into the prison. Um, it feels to me like a, a really nice visual representation of the way that heaven breaks into earth here. They're, they're, they're meeting along this boundary um, in a way that 
the story can't quite convey as powerfully or as immediately as a piece of art can. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. I like that. And I like the horizontal contrasting with the vertical where you have this column of fire that mm -hmm. Nephi and Lehi are standing in. Mm -hmm. You see heaven coming down through that. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Um, also in that book, you bring up the significance and frequency and use of the phrase as if. What can you tell us about oh, that? Gosh. This is a really striking piece of the text of Helaman 5. And I don't know that I have, I haven't settled on my favorite answer yet, but Helaman 5 contains more instances of the phrase as if than anywhere in scripture by a long shot. I mean, I should have looked up the exact number, but it's something like 20 or 25 times wow. in this single chapter. At most in other chapters, you're going to get it three times, five times, that would mm -hmm. be pretty striking. Yeah. But to have it closer to 20 in a single chapter, there's something very deliberate going on. Mm -hmm. And at least one, one outcome of the frequency of that phrase is that it draws attention to, um, to all of the surprising appearances that are happening. So as if is a phrase that we use sometimes to mark uncertainty, sometimes to draw comparisons. Mm -hmm. So, um, an example I've used before is that if I say, um, it sounds as if you have a cold. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. You sound very <laughs> healthy and well. But if I were to say, it sounds as if you have a cold, I would be expressing, I'm not sure if you have a cold. Also, it seems, it appears, uh -huh. you appear to me to be maybe feeling a little unwell. And that then invites you to verify. So it's uh, So as if marks something as an appearance. It's where we're kind of testing out how something appears to us and then looking for verification. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be what's happening in this chapter. It's so frequently the Helaman five talks about, um, it, it, the, the walls of the prison shook as if they were going to tumble to the ground. Um, people are casting their eyes toward heaven or Nephi and Lehi are in the attitude as if speaking mm -hmm, yeah. to, to heavenly beings. Um, and all of these are marked then as appearances, surprising sights. Yeah. So that's a lot of setup all to say, that as if draws attention to the eyes of the characters who are in that scene. What are they seeing that's new and surprising that they have to figure out how to verify? And then that relates to this piece really beautifully because if there's one thing that our sculptor has emphasized, it's eyes and mm -hmm. sight lines and what we might call gazes. Um, all of these different characters looking in all these different directions. Um, most pronounced are the people on the bottom just looking straight up like, 180 degrees up, uh, and then the angels are looking down in that direction. That the 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 different sight lines of this piece, I think, are one of the most notable features. And so I'm really touched personally as someone who um, has thought a lot about that phrase "as if" in mm -hmm. Helaman Five. I'm I'm quite touched to find that represented visually in this artwork. That's lovely. Thanks for those insights. Can you share your personal reaction to the artwork or these passages of scripture? Yeah. Well, let me say this about the artwork. The thing that struck me the most about it is, and we haven't talked about it at all, is the way that Nephi and Lehi are portrayed. Mm -hmm. They are, in fact, in some ways, they look more angelic than the angels. Yeah. The angels are in color. They've got some blue to them. Uh -huh. uh, Nephi and Lehi are the ones who are totally white, and they've got this background of bright orange, the warmest color in the entire piece. Mm -hmm. And they are kind of the, the central focus of the piece, even as all of the other characters kind of look elsewhere, which is really interesting. Um, in some ways, that's the inverse of Helaman 5, where everybody's looking at Nephi and Lehi to see where they're looking, noticing that they're looking up yeah. uh, at the angels. The other thing that's striking to me about that, about the portrayal of Nephi and Lehi, um, and this gets to the, the question of just personal reaction. Mm -hmm. It took me a long time to notice them when I first looked at this piece, which is oh, so funny because they are dead center. They've got this bright, vibrant color behind them. And yet for me, my attention was immediately drawn to the other characters. The pe where, where's everybody looking? And how is this different than Helaman 5? Um, it took me like five minutes of sitting at this piece to realize, wait a minute, Nephi and Lehi, <laughs> there's something interesting going on here, some interesting artistic choices. Mm -hmm. um, but just looking at Nephi and Lehi is actually a very important part of Helaman 5 
because that is how the people in the prison end up being converted. And uh, so I like that the author has, has drawn it our attention visually to these prophet figures, even if it took me a second to notice it. In Helaman 5, um, Nephi and Lehi play a very curious role, it seems to me. Mm-hmm. Usually, if you're going to have two prophets, two preachers on a mission there to convert people, um, you might expect them to say something, <laughs> You're right? Yeah. You might expect them to speak. But in this prison scene, they speak hardly at all. The only words they say are right when the Lamanites come into the prison at the very first. And the Lamanites are shocked because Nephi and Lehi are in flame. Mm-hmm. And that seems, that seems to wake Nephi and Lehi up. And they realize, oh, sure enough, we are. Don't be afraid. That's what they tell everybody. It's uh-huh. God who has shown you this. And then the prison starts shaking. A cloud of darkness comes in. And Nephi and Lehi don't say anything else. That we have recorded. Their role in this conversion seems to be purely visual, by which I mean they kind of stand there and they start having a conversation with heaven, but it's a conversation that ends up being visible, even if the the people in the prison can't hear it. Mm -hmm. At some point, everyone is able to turn and look and they see Nephi and Lehi and they kind of look like they're talking to some people up there. And just the fact that Nephi and Lehi, they're not scared They're not um, too concerned about this cloud of darkness. They don't seem concerned about the walls shaking. Uh The very fact that they are calm and engaging somewhere else, looking elsewhere, gets the people in the prison to start asking questions. Well, who are they talking to? Why aren't they scared? How can, uh, what's happening here? And that to me is a lesson about the power of just orienting ourselves differently as disciples. Mm -hmm. Because they were oriented in a different direction, that opened up new possibilities for the people. Um, and I think of it just kind of like being tuned into a different radio frequency. Yeah. That's our job as disciples is to be oriented, tuned in just slightly differently so that people can look at us and say, well, hang on, they're showing up in this situation a little bit differently. How come? And then that opens up questions and possibilities. So for me, the centrality of Nephi and Lehi in this piece, that's very apropos. That's exactly what's at stake in Helaman 5. That is beautiful. There's some great reactions and really neat witnesses that we found in this piece. So thank you for those. Yeah, you bet. And thanks for talking with us today. Anytime.